Today we're going to show how to do weight and balance on an airplane. Uh, that airplane today will be a 172N. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need the pilot's operating handbook. It should be in the plane that you're flying. If you're doing this for a flight simulator, you'll have to try to find one online. They're, they're out there. Uh, if you're doing this in real life, you want to use the one that's actually in the plane though because it's meant for the actual serial number of the plane that you're going to fly. On this Cessna 172N at least, the weight and balance and equipment list is in section six. All right, here we are at section six, weight and balance. And it says weight and balance is on page 6-6. -6. We're going to go there. So on 6-6, it tells you exactly what's going on here. But just to teach you, we have to look at this loading arrangements chart right here. Let me see if I can get that a little bit bigger. And what this shows you is everything you need to know for your calculations on weight and balance. The big formula on weight and balance is weight times arm equals moment. That all makes sense in a minute. But for now, just know that you need to know the formula. Weight times arm equals moment. Weight is pretty self-explanatory. That's your pounds, whatever you're putting in a certain place in the plane. Arm, you can think of it as the center of gravity. And that's why they have CG arm, okay? In each position in a plane, there's a different center of gravity. So that's why every place that they tell you or station that they tell you is going to have a different arm. And the moment is just going to be the multiplication of those two things together. What, it all, what will all this tell you eventually? It'll tell you if you're within weight and balance of the plane in order to take off before you fly the plane in order to be safe. Now that I showed you where you get all these arms and basically everything that you need, stations, I want to show you that they actually give you a sample problem in the POH for the Cessna 172 right here. And there are a couple of things that we haven't talked about yet. If you notice, they have everything that you need to calculate your weight and balance right here. All right. Uh, the first thing that we haven't talked about yet is the basic empty weight. Every aircraft is going to be different. It all depends on what's installed on the inside. Sometimes they'll take an old radio out and put a new one in that weighs less. So they'll update the weight and balance sheet that you need over time. So we're going to keep the sample loading problems basic empty weight of the 172N as 1,454. And we're going to start a whole new chart because we're going to use their flow right here to calculate the weight and balance of the plane. So here we go. We're going to enter a basic empty weight. But we're going to use the same calculations here. We're going to have weight, arm, and moment. So I'm going to make one column here for weight, one for arm, and one for moment. The basic empty weight is 1,454 pounds. And over here, they give you the moment. They don't give you the arm. Uh, again, the arm of the plane that you're flying, it might be different. It all depends on what's in the plane that you're actually flying. So you have to look at the weight and balance sheet that they have in the paperwork of the plane. It should be on the plane somewhere around the pilot's operating handbook. So the moment here, we'll use this. It says 57.6. Now, if you notice, that's out of a thousand. So what they did was they reduced the total moment of 57,600 and they made it 57.6. Sometimes and a lot of times they will do that just to make the math easier. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to do this all longhand. So I'm going to call that 57,600 for the moment. Now that means that we don't have the arm for that, which is fine because honestly you don't need that. What you're going to need for a weight and balance at the end is the total arm. And that's going to be calculated with the weight and the moment. So that's why they're not showing you the arm right here for each and every little thing. Basic empty weight also includes full oil. So that's why this measurement is pertaining to the aircraft that you're actually flying. And it has everything but the things that you add into the plane. Passengers, baggage, and usable fuel. So that's what we have. All right. So we'll enter another column for usable fuel. So the next thing that we're going to calculate is usable fuel. And fuel is six, about six pounds per gallon. Uh, so we're going to go with standard tanks here. If you have long range tanks, it'd be a little bit more, but standard tanks, you have 40 gallons maximum. So let's pretend that we fueled the plane up to full. We're going to pretend that we had 40 gallons and times six pounds is 240 pounds. That's in the weight column. 
And the moment that they said was 11,500. 11.5 if you're dividing by 1,000 to make the math easier, but we're going with that. All right. The next thing that we're going to count for, and I already showed you this on the loading arrangements. We know the arm for a front passenger and pilot is 37. We'll put that in there just so we have it. And that's the next thing that we're going to calculate is the pilot and front passenger. And 37 was the average there. So pilot, front passenger. Let's say the pilot weighs 170. Let's say the front passenger also weighs 170. That will total 340 pounds. And 340 times 37 will give us the moment. So what we're gonna to do to find the moment here is we're gonna multiply weight times arm. Total weight is 340 times the arm, which is 37. That equals 12,580. That's why I did these other calculations. I multiply times 1,000 to not make them simplified so that way I have it just equal here. And then we can always do the math later on to make it out of 1,000 to make it easy. It's, it's all up to you, honestly. It's whatever you want. All right, rear passengers are next. So we'll make another column here for rear passengers. And again, the station for the rear passengers said it had an arm of 73. And rear passengers. So let's pretend that we only have one passenger back there. They weigh 170 pounds. And we're going to multiply that. So 170 times 73 equals... 12,410, that's my moment. Weight times arm equals moment. Then we have the baggage areas, baggage area one. Again, I'm not gonna go by the simple problem, just going by what they asked for here. I'm gonna to go to my central gravity for baggage area one, which is 95, so the arm is 95. And let's pretend that we got 50 pounds of baggage in baggage area one. 50 times 95 is 4,750 for a moment. Baggage area two, make another column for that. And if we go back to the loading arrangements, baggage area two had an average in the center of 123 for the arm. Let's pretend that we had the tow bar back there and a couple of other items, maybe like a little first aid survival kit. Let's say that that is, I don't know, 25 pounds. So we go 25 times 123 equals 3,075. <clears throat> Over here, they calculate the total weight and moments. So what they're going to do with this information is you're going to total all this stuff up. You're going to total up all your weights and all your moments. And that's eventually going to tell us the total arm when we do this formula. I'll show you how to do that, but let's total up all the weights. So we got 1,454 plus 240, plus 340 total for pilot and passenger in the front, plus 170 for a rear passenger, plus 50 for the amount of baggage in the baggage area one, plus another 25 in the baggage area two for the tow bar and some other items, just 2,279. That's my total weight right there, okay? Arm we're going to figure out because the arm will be my total center of gravity. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that. We have to add all the moments together. Now notice that I'm going to total all these up. But if you had it simplified, I'll make it easier, which is why they simplify. I don't like to simplify. Just me. doesn't really matter. So I'm going to total 57,600 plus 11,500 plus 12,580 plus 12,410, plus 4,750, plus 3,075 equals 101, 915. So 101,915 is my moment. Now, the reason why you need to get all these numbers down is because you have to find out the total arm, which is your center of gravity. It's going to have the total center of gravity for the whole entire plane when you have the weight and the moment there. Now seeing that weight times arm is equal to moment, it's just a simple math problem at this point. What you have to do to get arm 
is you have to take, I'm going to take W for weight, okay, times arm equals moment, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to divide by weight. I'll get rid of that. So the arm or center of gravity is equal to the moment, total moment, divided by total weight. And that's the formula that we're going to use to find out the center of gravity. So again, my moment was 101,915. We're going to divide that by 2,279. And my center of gravity, as done with the math, is 44.7191. Again, we don't have to be highly, we don't have to be using a lot of decimal points, but I like to do it the long way, and that way we have no problems. So, let's see what's going on here, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to go to our weight and balance here. Now, you could use this chart. I decided to do it the long way to show you how it's done the long way. And we're going to go down this thing called center of gravity moment envelope here. Utility category is if you're going to do a lot of different maneuvers that put more stress on the plane. The normal category is just for normal flying. So we're going to make sure that we're within compliance with the normal category. The way this chart works is they have the loaded airplane weight. Well, that's 2,279 pounds according to this thing. So I'm going to move up here, 2,200. And each of these looks to be 20. So 20, 40, 60, 79. It's almost 80. So we're right about here on this line right here for loaded airplane weight. All right. Then on the bottom, it says the moment divided by 1,000. If we want to get this divided by 1,000, what we will do is we'll take the 101,915 and divide by 1,000. And that equals 101. 0.915. Obviously, you just move the decimal point three places to the left. So we have 2,280 and 101.95. And that's right here at the moment. Loaded airplane moment 101 is right about here. 2,280 is here. So we're right within that envelope right here. These out, these lines show you that you can actually fly the plane safely. And we're right there. So in the normal category, we're allowed to fly. Now you're probably wondering after I did that, why did we calculate the center of gravity? Well, this is the chart that deals with center of gravity. We have the loaded airplane weight here. And we have the center of gravity here, which is your total arm here. So you can check it on this as well. Okay, 2,279 pounds is 20, 40, 60, 80, 2,280 around there, right there at that line. And the center of gravity is 44. 0.71. So 44, 20, 40, 60, 70. And we make that go up to 2,280. And as you can see, we're within the center of gravity limits right here. So that is what we want. And that's again for the normal category, which is normal flying, which makes sense because we did it both ways. We checked with the weight in the moment and the weight and the arm, which is the center of gravity. And it shows me that I'm within compliance of weight and balances. If you went outside of this, at all you would not be doing too well for weights and balances you'd be out of balance with weight and the same thing with this center of gravity moment envelope if you're outside of this stuff at all you are not within weight and balance uh, limitations so that's how basically you do weight and balance on a plane every plane will be different every plane you fly will be different the basic empty weight will be different in every plane so that's why we have to make sure that you have the POH for the actual plane you're flying. Uh, if you're doing flight simming, just get a POH according to the model number that you're flying and do exactly what we did here. And you should be able to do a weight and balance problem. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please leave comments below and I'll be more than willing to help you. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and push that subscribe button below. And while you're down there, also push on the bell notification icon so that way you'll be notified of future Eric Flight videos. We appreciate all your support. Thank you and have a great day.